Hi, my name is Peter Chin Hong, and I'm an infectious disease physician and faculty member at UCSF. Today, I'm going to give an overview of sexually transmitted infections. These are our learning objectives for this module. I'm mainly going to introduce you to an organizational framework which will guide you throughout the whole section on sexually transmitted infections. Specifically, I want you to compare and contrast three main clinical STI syndromes, which are genital ulcer disease, urethritis, cervicitis, and vaginitis. Overall, from a public health point of view, you should recognize that many STIs are asymptomatic but still transmissible. Here is our pathogen map that you all know very well with a whole host of my favorite organisms. For genital ulcer disease, these are the pathogens we will look at. Herpes simplex virus, Treponema pallidum, and Haemophilus ducreae. Minor contributors are Chlamydia trachomatis, which causes lymphogranuloma venarum, and Klebsiella granulomatis. For urethritis and cervicitis, the main pathogens implicated are Chlamydia and Neisseria gonorrhea. Finally, for causes of vaginitis or vaginal discharge, only one of the three main causes is clearly sexually transmitted, which is the protozoa called trichomonas. However, because the evaluation of vaginal discharge is, is so tightly linked to the other two causes, which are bacterial vaginosis, or BV, and candida, we will consider all three as a bonus. In blue, these are other sexually transmitted infections that will be covered in other parts of this course. We will be referring to sexually transmitted infections in this module, although you will also be hearing sexually transmitted diseases as a term in the medical community. We wanted to distinguish STI from STD because many infections are asymptomatic. Because most are asymptomatic, screening is necessary to detect infection. Taking a good sexual health history also requires that you become facile with talking to patients about their partners and sex practices without judgment and discomfort. One question I ask all my patients is, do you have sex with men, women, or transgender individuals? Alternatively, I ask, do you have sex with men, women, or both? This United States Air Force poster was used to remind servicemen fighting abroad during World War II that STIs exist. The use of images versus just text was very powerful in these public health campaigns in the military as well as back at home. The magnitude of sexually transmitted infections is staggering. More than one million men and women acquire an STI worldwide every day. In the United States, there are about 19 million new STIs per year. Half of these are in people under 25. Note that we must report certain STIs to your local DPH or Department of Public Health, as well as to the state and the Centers for Disease Control. These are chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, and trichomonas. Most of the infections are due to chlamydia, followed by GC or gonococcus, syphilis, and trichomonas. Although not reportable, there is a high population prevalence of HSV with 25% of the U.S. population having serologic evidence of infection. The map on the slide shows the burden of curable STIs worldwide. Most STIs are in the Americas and in Asia. Just a few words on screening for sexually transmitted infections. First of all, if you evaluate for an STI, don't forget to think about HIV counseling and testing. Also, consider special populations for screening. These include sexually active men and women, sexually active men who have sex with men, pregnant women, and HIV-infected patients. For example, asymptomatic women with risk factors for sexually transmitted infections, and these include new sex partner, multiple sex partners, history of sexually transmitted infections, illicit drug use, contact with sex workers, imprisonment, and meeting partners on the internet. These asymptomatic women with these risk factors should be screened for gonococcal or chlamydial infection annually. For men who have sex with men, most providers check at least an annual HIV antibody, gonorrhea and chlamydia testing, and syphilis serology.
When I think about SDIs, I think about classifying them into three boxes, genital ulcer disease, urethritis or cervicitis, and vaginitis. These are the main causes of genital ulcer disease, herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2, mainly as well as syphilis, caused by T. pallidum, and chancroid as a distant third, which is caused by H. ducreyi. These are the two main causes of urethritis and cervicitis. These are chlamydia trachomatis as well as gonococcus. Finally, there are three main causes of vaginitis. Only one of these is a sexually transmitted infection, but we include all three because the workup is the same. Here's a summary table showing each of the main sexually transmitted infections placed in one of three boxes, genital ulcer disease, urethritis slash cervicitis, and vaginitis. Thank you for listening and see you soon. Was that hear you soon? Signing out.